the Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. We're uh, with Martin Armstrong. We, maybe we'll start a regular show called Down the Rabbit Hole with, with our good friend Martin Armstrong. Martin, great to have you back on as always. So we're talking uh, pandemic restrictions are on the wane. More and more countries doing away with them. Of course, the people's, of course, the free state of Florida did away with them quite some time ago. Is this a net plus for the economy or are we too far down the rabbit hole for it to make a difference to most countries? I would say that at this stage in the game, it depends what country you're talking about. But Europe, for example, way too far down the the rabbit hole. And that is... Uh, this whole idea of, of creating a pandemic was mainly driven by economics, not by health. And so the problem is emanating from there. Europe went to negative interest rates in 2014, and their bond market has been completely destroyed. This has been the failure of Keynesian economics, where lower interest rates increase the money supply and create inflation and stimulate the economy, which has completely failed. So the repo crisis in August 19, which just preceded the, the whole thing, was basically U.S. banks withdrawing, refusing to put in lend money to European banks. So then the Fed had to step in to bail out that. Now the banks in New York won't even accept European sovereign debt for collateral. I was told by one of them off the record, we won't even give them 10 cents on the dollar. This is really the whole thing. And this great reset with Schwab saying you'll own nothing and you'll be happy is really a ploy. They're trying to make it sound like they're doing this for you, when in fact it's them that has to default. And so they... To their idea of a default is let's wipe out everybody's debt so that it hides ours, basically, is what it is. Because <laughs> uh, if they default by themselves, you're wiping out all the pension funds. And I think you'll have millions of people down there at, at parliaments, pitchforks at that stage. So it, it, it's a, more of a clever ploy to cover up what they have done and how they have screwed up mismanagement of the economy. And Schwab has a young leaders program. And if you just look at this, and it's not a conspiracy theory, you can Google it. This is what he does. The graduates from there are the head of, of Trudeau in Canada and New Zealand. Every place you look at, he's got the head of the EU as his board member, the head of the IMF, the ECB are on his board. He controls it all. And they're pushing his idea of revising the world economy. And you bring up these things, oh, conspiracy theory. It's not. He's put out videos on, you'll love it and be happy. And all. this is not somebody interpreting what he said. This is what he's actually saying. I was thinking uh, maybe a new swing on it. You won't own anything. All you'll own are NFTs, (laughs) right? So you won't have to title anything. You'll just own an NFT. And that'll have all of your uh, life's possessions in it, which I guess could be easily appropriated or expropriated away from you. Yeah, people have to understand it's not the creation of money that creates the hyperinflation. That is the response to the fiscal mismanagement. In December of 22, of 1922, that's when Germany confiscated 10% of everybody's assets out of the bank. And they gave you these bonds, which you can buy on. And that's what started the hyperinflation. Once the government did that, people no longer trusted the banks. They no longer trusted the government. And they basically put their money in everything you know tangible they could or other currencies at different countries. So it, it wasn't the hyperinflation that makes it bad. It's That's the response when people just completely lose confidence in government and run the other way. All right. So now we've got inflation, according to John Williams of Shadow Stats, who calculates inflation the good old way, the way they used to do it in the 60s and 70s. It could be 14 to 15 percent. Is that going to persist and get worse? Or is the Federal Reserve Powell with his uh, 
his feints towards monetary sanity. Is that going to be the bomb that brings inflation down? Or are we too far down the rabbit hole for that to work? No, it's uh, Keynesian economics has completely failed. And this idea of raising interest rates and lowering your interest rates, increasing money supply. I mean, they did quantitative easing for, you know, basically since 2008. It really didn't uh, result in massive inflation because the other side, which they don't consider, is confidence. If people didn't have any confidence in the future, what were they doing? They were basically hoarding their money. So like they were buying safes in, in Europe and, and stashing cash, et cetera. So they weren't spending it. So you could increase the money supply. That's very nice. But if the people didn't spend it, then you're still not going to get the inflation comes. And when basically people begin to see it's going to cost them more tomorrow than it will today. That's when it, it begins to, to kick in. And what has created it this time has been the collapse in, in the entire supply chain, which these restrictions initiated. And really the brain dead governor of California has only made it even worse to actually put in restrictions and say that if I met you for lunch and then tomorrow you say, oh, hey, Marty, I, got, I, had, I have to quarantine for two weeks, nobody can work. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is the problem. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And my concern after working with governments for 40 years is, is that no matter what country we're talking about, I've worked with them all in Europe, Asia, the United States, they're all the same. And my assessment is, is that they will never, ever admit a mistake. And that's the problem. So they need some sort of an exit strategy. The ones that are, are bailing out of this now, or at least blaming the other countries for, for putting it in, is there's all kinds of studies coming out. The masks don't work. Even the CDC said that. You can Google the Washington Post. The masks were, quote unquote, useless during the 1918 Spanish when, you know, I had, I, and they said, I said, look, I don't know anybody with it. And they said, you could have got it just from picking up gas, you know, pumping gas in your car. So I said, in other words, the masks don't work. And they said, no, not really. So it's just crazy. It's just been a lot of propaganda. People saying one thing, changing their mind. Nobody knows what the real truth is because they keep changing it all the time. Yeah. So what about precious metals? They've been holding up pretty well. Is there going to be people of mass realization that, that you need to be holding this to avoid all the other? I think if you look at history, all right, the, the hyperinflation in Germany was really the collapse of the confidence in the government itself. And, and what people have to understand is you can also Google it. Why did they lose confidence in the Weimar Republic? Because it was actually a communist revolution. In 1918, they asked the Russians to even come take Germany. That's how bad it was. And then the Weimar Republic basically struck a, a deal, made it kind of socialist. But when that happened, capital got scared and started leaving the country. And we see that here. That's why the, the stock market has gone up. And people, oh, it's got to crash. It's got to crash, all this stuff. They don't realize that Europe is so bad. Well, all the capital has been rushing here, all the smart money going into equities. They've been buying real estate everywhere. Florida has just been crazy. Even on my house, I get offers like every, you know, I would say two or three a week, you know, and, you know, they're like two or three times what you paid. Yeah, exactly. Same here. I bought a house in, in May. It's already up uh, 30%. Yeah, it's, it's, it's everybody's right. coming here. It's just. Um, All right. So what about China? They seem to be in this midst of this housing debacle. Like they studied everything that the U.S. did in the early 2000s and then multiplied it times 100. Is there a way out of this for them? Well, there's a little more behind the scene. China was actually warning the provinces and, and these various entities not to borrow in dollars, but they were borrowing in dollars because the interest rates were cheap. And so what's happened now, that's why China came out 
uh, and told Powell that he shouldn't raise interest rates. Hmm. The real crisis here is that if Powell is more independent than the rest of the central banks, all right, he didn't go negative. They, they knew that would be a disaster. And he's been telling them, look, we have inflation. I have to, I really have to raise interest rates. And the ECB came back and said, we're not going to raise interest rates. Maybe we'll cut down what we're buying. So China went and told Powell, please don't raise interest rates. Because all the dollar debt outside the U.S. in these emerging markets, which includes China, is a disaster for them. As the dollar goes up, because you get these crises, even without the Fed raising interest rates, you then make them insolvent. And that's the real problem we have. The same thing happened. I remember back in the 80s, the the banks were all selling Swiss loans down in Australia and the housing market got decimated because of it. Same thing in Europe when the Euro and Swiss peg broke. The banks have been selling Swiss loans to save money in interest rates, and then all of a sudden they owe 20% more. Um, So this is the real problem with the emerging markets. And and that's why I say you got to maybe look between the the lines a little bit. But that's why China went and told the Fed, please don't raise interest rates. It's not just the debt they have, but if it's in dollars and the dollar goes up another 20%, they are completely wiped out. Yeah, and if they at the point where it reminds me of uh, remember when that guy McCain was running for president and everything's blowing up all over, and he says the economy is fundamentally sound. First, it started with subprime, and then it went to Alte, and then it went to Prime, and it just became a contagion. And it looks like their real estate market is following the same path here, where even the good operators are really coming under scrutiny and getting slammed. Yeah, the even the ones that did manage things correctly, they all get painted with the same brush. That's the problem. Yeah. And but it what makes it on steroids is because a lot of this debt is in dollars, not why. So as the dollar goes up, it, it makes things much, much worse for them internationally. So they're gonna have a major blow up if rates do go higher, which they appear to be, even if they go up 100 basis points or 200 basis points, that's a nail in the coffin. Yeah, the Fed is really between a rock and a hard place. It's got inflation here. If it doesn't raise the rates domestically, they're going to blame the Fed. We got all this inflation, and that's your fault. And particularly the politician, they have to take no responsibility for what they do fiscally. It's the Fed's fault if, if inflation happens or declines or whatever, it's always the Fed, where the Fed can't control their fiscal side of spending. You know, that's it. So it's there was a big blow up between the Fed and the White House back in 1951, because the White House had directed the Fed to maintain all U.S. government debt at par during World War II, because they didn't want the interest rates going up. And then the Korean War was starting. And they were trying to get the Fed to continue it. And it said, look, we're not going to do it. And they just refused. So in 1951, there was a big blow up. And the Fed stopped listening to the rest of the government, said, sorry, we're here independent. And that's hey, so stock market had a bit of a correction. Everybody is out there. Cassandra, like the sky is falling. But according to your formula here, the international flows are still coming into the market and still chasing American stocks because, I guess, a uh, defensive maneuver to move money away from banks and economies that people aren't trusting anymore. We going higher still? Yeah, I think what you're going to see is maybe a softening going into March, but it will probably be the Europeans that basically buy the lows again. And you have to understand that Schwab has a death grip on Europe. The head of the EU was on his board. Lagarde at ECB is on his board. The head of the IMF is on his board. And and he is a, more or less, he really is a control freak. And he is not going to simply 
give up on his worldwide dream of creating Marxist utopia. And that's what he is about. And I've argued against this, you know, until I'm blue in the face. Yeah, but and I explained all right, the reason Marxism made sense back um, in the 19th century, and most people don't realize, but Russia kept serfdom until 1861. Serfdom ended in Europe in the 14th century. So their serfdom ended with our civil war and slavery. Then what happened was the people didn't own anything. They didn't own any property, anything. They, there, there wasn't land to go till the soil for themselves. So the idea that let's go get all these aristocrats, they are the ones that are controlling everything. At least it made sense. All right. To the person that had nothing. Today, everybody has their house. They have their car. Do you really want to give up everything and own nothing? It's the same sales pitch doesn't ring true today. You can't leave anything to your children. Forget that. Saving for the college education. No, don't do that. It's a completely different set of circumstances today versus the 19th century. I think he's just living in the past. Yeah, the means of production that the uh, workers will rise up and we'll have this socialist utopia. Kind of, we got a hundred plus years of experience that maybe that's not such a good thing. So you still thinking Dow 65,000? Uh, Dow keeps going. Ahead, yes. You're talking about, for that to happen, you're, you're talking about the confidence in government collapsing, as I was talking about with Germany. Mm -hmm. Now, we have uh, a guy who clearly has dementia <laughs> as the leader of the free world. Uh, that does not inspire uh, confidence in government at all. No idea who you're talking about, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> um, just leave it at that. <laughs> and this whole thing... Um, my goodness, I had it myself. I uh, wound up in the hospital for a while, and hey, I'm better than ever. So confidence in governments eroding everywhere. It doesn't matter what country you're in. If there's a country that really believes in their government, then I'd like to find out where that place is. I haven't been able to find it yet. I don't know of any. I haven't checked in on Bangladesh lately, but... <laughs> Hey, Chile, look what they've done. New government. South America, they got this tug of war between socialism and kind of aristocratic autocracy. And they go back and forth with no resolution. And when we look in Europe, uh, yeah, you already made the case for Europe. Africa, I don't know. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the uh, emerging free continent. Asia looks like the place. Southeast Asia, okay. For right now but they're all starting to also cave in to these demands of taxation on worldwide etc even the uae just announced they're doing a nine percent corporate tax so i think really we we have to look at this realistically and the collapse in these restrictions is basically um, showing that what's happening here as far as the confidence in government is concerned. And this has put the confidence in, in the Biden administration is at record lows. My concern is that these people, they know the, the game. They need a diversion because they can't admit that they made this classic major you know, error with this stuff. So how do they get out of it? Do they suddenly say, oh, so sorry, we're terribly sorry, we, have, we made a mistake? Uh, not going to happen. They phase out of it. And, and my concern is what I've been hearing is they are going to church every day, lighting the candles and, and praying that Putin you know, invades Ukraine. And that would basically be the diversion. They want war to then be able to say, you know, you don't change the horse in the middle of the, of the stream. Power. And, and that's basically what they're, they're, they're trying to do. If you look realistically, as I was advising people in, in Ukraine for the revolution and everything. So I'm very familiar with it and on both sides. And the eastern side, is, they're Russians. They speak Russian. When Yanukovych became president, he came from the east and he spoke Ukrainian with an accent. 
I mean, they used to joke about it. And that was the, the real problem. I mean, Ukraine was part of the, the Soviet Union. In the Soviet Union, people migrated at that time. So half of Ukraine are really Russians. They're not Ukrainian. Crimea, they're all Russians or, or Tartars. That's it. No Ukrainian. So this, we're back to this old 19th century, this is the border, I'm the king, and it's more of an imperialistic view. In the very beginning, I said, look, you should really just split Ukraine in half, give the Russian half back to Russia, because that's what they want. And But we're in this territorial dispute. And basically, this is it would be like Mexico coming in and taking Texas and say, we used to own this. But all the people there are Americans. And it's the same thing here in reverse. They're Russians and they want to be part of Russia. They don't want to be part of Just be realistic here. So why are they so intent on this whole nonsense with Russia is I think they need a diversion. I think that's what they're really trying to do. The negotiations with him and refusing any compromise on anything was like a spit in the face. Please invade so we can blame you for everything. That's a bleak picture, but the U.S. people here are not behind any type of military intervention in Ukraine. It has no strategic value to the U.S. And maybe it'll be as when a couple of administrations ago, they wanted to invade Syria and the country rose up and basically stopped them. And do you think the chart's telling you there's going to be a war here? or well, There's going to be a war, yes, but I don't think you're looking at us sending hundreds and millions of troops overseas to defend Europe again. It's just not going to happen. This is just reality. And you have to understand the political incentive behind it. This is absurd. The protests I put on our blog, some photographs I was sent from the protesters in Germany. They had police with sticks walking between them to make sure that they were they're six feet apart. And if they weren't, they got arrested. But it's okay for a policeman to walk between the two. Yeah. Uh, it's just absurd with what they're doing in in Australia. They were shooting protesters with rubber bullets. Mm -hmm. um, this is not what you would call a free country by any you know shape it's even you take the nonsense of neil young protesting against rogan in the united states you have the right to go out and preach communism if you want that's what free speech is but under communism you don't have the right to go out and preach freedom yeah. you're not going to survive yeah. i mean this cancel culture is part of the whole problem everybody should have a right to speak and you can't silence just the other side because you don't like what they have to say that is that's Pravda that's Russia yeah um, and so it, it, it's the whole collapse in the confidence of government that's all behind this thing and it's just absurd totally all right Martin hey go over to Martin's site armstrongeconomics.com sign up for his daily missives they're very informative I love your historical perspective on things, Martin. The average person born today thinks history started on their birth date and, and the latest history was last week or yesterday's news on TV, on whatever outlet they're watching it. So if you got a question for Martin, shoot me an email, kl at kerryletz.com. We'll get you an answer. Martin, always a pleasure, always thought-provoking. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for inviting me. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever.